topic that kind of um, jumped out at me uh, was something that I, I was taking it for granted. I thought that I had it covered, and then I had a conversation about a group of potential students uh, that realised, maybe realised that I need to rethink, uh, rethink it. So let's start with this question: Are you a stickler? Let's have a show of hands. How many sticklers are there in the in the room? Nobody's going to confess to being a stickler. Oh, there's one down there. All right. <laughs> Just one sticker. Okay. Well, <clears throat> how do you feel about this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I kind of think, well, you know, morphological change. If we just had one option, that wouldn't be so bad, would it? Yeah, definitely a few more stickers then. <laughs> then admitted. Uh, uh, then admitted there. Uh, okay. So the question <clears throat> I ask myself: uh, Am I dyslexic? When I typed this slide first of all, I realised I had written: Am I dyslexic? <laughs> but, um, this is one of those things that when people talk about it, you kind of go, "Oh yeah, that's me. Oh yeah, that's me." You know, it's it's kind of like being a Virgo or something like that. You know, <laughs> you, you see yourself in it. Um, and I know from what I know about it, I know that it runs in families. Uh, so my dad's. Um, Spelling is pretty bad. My mum always has to correct it before he sends any form letters uh, out to anyone. Uh, so yeah, they take the box there. Runs in families. Um, mostly affects boys. Check. I'm a boy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, it slows reading down. I have a friend who's um, a novelist, and every now and then he asks me to, to read something <coughs> that he's written, and sometimes it's like you know. I just wrote this great paragraph, you have, you have to read it. And we're sitting there in the bar and he's like, are you finished yet? Are you finished yet? <laughs> are you finished yet? So yeah, I'm, I'm a slowish reader. Uh, so my, that might be the thing there. I prefer non-textual input. Uh, um, I am a huge fan of podcasts. I listen to them kind of endlessly and uh, I'm much more likely to say to you, I heard rather than I read. Uh, because that's where I get my kind of preferred input. Uh, mixing up or missing letters. Well, if you've got an email from me, you might have noticed one of these. <laughs> that uh, I've written not when I meant note, or even worse, when I meant now, uh, as in that is not available, <laughs> meaning it's now available. That's the, that's the problem. Out instead of are, instead of they. And yeah, see the problem over there? Yeah. yeah, okay. And I, these are things that I know that I, 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 I tend to make that mistake, but when I write it, I can't see it. So I think, oh yeah, I think maybe I'm a little bit dyslexic. Maybe I am. Uh, and so I thought that that was something as a teacher and as a course designer that I was taking into consideration, that I was making allowances for, that, that I had it covered. And then... Uh, I was talking to uh, a teacher who wanted to, 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 to uh, bring a group of students and uh, she explained it to me a bit differently. She explained it to me about that, explained that it's a problem of invisible hurdles, that dyslexic students uh, see difficulties where other students don't, don't see them. And there are things there that trip them up and other students and other, and the teacher as well, kind of, what happened? Why did you, why did you trip up? There was nothing there. There was no barrier. There was nothing in your way. And uh, through talking to her about whether the course I was running would suit her students, I had occasion to look more deeply into it. And of course, this issue of difficulty with accurate and fluent word recognition, that was something that I had considered, that I had thought of. Um, difficulty with spelling, yeah and processing spoken information. And that was something that I hadn't considered. I thought, well, you know, there's a problem. the problem is with text and handling text. So if instead of that we provide a spoken input or we support it with spoken input, that will solve the problem. But uh, this is, 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 is also one of those hurdles. Um, it influences aspects of producing and using language, so as evidenced by my by my emails, that, uh, that is something that I had also considered and getting formative feedback on your written work was something that I had built in. So I thought I had that one covered. 
But this one really took me by surprise. The lower capacity of working memory, holding fewer pieces of information, was something that uh, I didn't, uh, I hadn't considered at all. Uh, and so maybe that links to the processing of spoken information. Uh, but that lower capacity of working memory is particularly an issue when it comes to instructions. What do I have to do next? Uh, and so um, when I'm running um, a task uh, and I'm try, trying to run it in a, in, a, in a way that fosters autonomy, mm. what I want to do is I want to give the students their instructions and let them go away and work it out. But that means that there tends to be a number of steps to those instructions. And uh, the, um, the dyslexic students are going to have trouble holding that in their memory. Uh, so I had not considered that as an issue. They need, they need more encounters to remember, more practice and repetition. So here you have the uh, sort of mechanical repetition uh, that um, uh, suggests the kind of exercises which I tend to dislike. <laughs> right? Uh, I tend to dislike uh, teaching through mechanical repetition and so unless it's a bit of drilling for pronunciation, uh, which everybody enjoys, um, I tend not to do that. And uh, so there is something where I'm not serving, not serving those students. The effect on instructions, which I just mentioned. Um, and then this, I think people would mostly expect that, yeah? The reduced phonemic awareness. Uh, and then to come to that in the first language is a challenge. In the second language, is a bigger challenge, and when that language is English, huge, because English is particularly problematic when it comes to reading versus spelling. So, um, mixing up letters, misreading words, therefore reading more slowly, difficulties of comprehension, and problems reading aloud. Now, I don't believe in reading aloud, so I feel like I'm off the hook for that one. Uh, so I don't uh, do, can you read the first sentence, can you read the second sentence, can you read the third sentence? I avoid that, um, not for these reasons, but because I think students, when they're reading, don't listen or can't understand mm -hmm. at the same time as reading. But uh, I hadn't realized that for dys dyslexic students, it's particularly stressful uh, to have to perform, perform reading in that way, something that they already find difficult. Mm -hmm. So these are the invisible hurdles. So I was talking, uh, I was talking to this, oh yeah, sorry, this is, I, I Pearson have a series of videos on dyslexic learners in the EFL classroom, and that's where I, 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 I've got this information. So it's not an article, <laughs> it's a video. But anyway, um, so I'm thinking, well, if one, of, one in ten of my students are dyslexic, uh, my students are either junior students on short courses and summer courses, or uh, trainee teachers one of ten of them are dyslexic, then I, I need to do a better job for them. I need to, I need to, uh, to, to solve these, to try and solve these issues. What can I do to help? So the teacher that I was talking to uh, specializes in working with dyslexic students, and so she gave me a few pointers. She was saying dyslexic students can only copy down very short, clearly written sentences. Now, my board work is, yeah, good, but it's not great. And so I think that that's something that I definitely could be accused of uh, not catering to. Um, often, I use slides and uh, information on slides. That then, then it tends to be much, much clearer. But this one, I'm really, really uh, guilty of this because I tend to put something up here and add something there, mm -hmm. picture, and I like to build up this kind of mind map kind of a, <laughs> kind of a situation, as you can imagine, um, and stand back and go, yep, yeah, that's what we've learned, let's tick it off, <laughs> and that kind of thing, and that's terrible. Yeah, for the sexy student, it becomes a haze, and what's important, what's not, what am I looking at now? Uh, so <coughs> that, that's, more, that, that's more work. When I'm using a screen to present, okay, again, you know, you do nice clean slides like this, 
But if you want to show them something uh, that's on a website or use word reference or something like that, there's lots of stuff going on, there's lots of stuff down the sides. It's not accessible for them. Uh, so that's something that needs to be reconsidered. It's hard for them to recall new words, structures and instructions, so they need to get it in chunks and with repetition. Now, I think I'm, re I'm I put this in yellow because I'm kind of reasonably good at chunking instructions mm -hmm. and saying it again and again, um, uh, because even to people who aren't my students. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but bearing in mind that recall problem, you need to, you need to, to, be, to be wary of that one. There's the never read aloud uh, and, and correct mistakes, but don't cause stress, make it a stress uh, situation. So I'm giving up on that green because I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay on that one. But this one is, I'm, I'm terrible in this one. In brainstorming, led by the teacher, they can feel frustrated and they have, thus avoid joining the others in discussion. Um, so I need the advice here is don't involve them in this. And, Brainstorming at the start of a task, or briefing I call it, is things that I use a lot. I get everybody around and say, this is what we're going to do, these are the steps, right, what was the first step, what was the second step, okay, what do you think we should do next? And all of that, and that technique is a management technique that I use a lot. And I'm being told here that for my dyslexic students, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So I've got to come up with something else uh, for them. Um, so, what I have been thinking about doing for this one is to um, provide a um, kind of clean, clear uh, Word document with the same steps on it, like two spaces between each one that they can um, refer to as they're, uh, as they're going back on what was the next step, what was the next thing to do, and when maybe we physically tick it off, or as I go around to check on progress, physically tick that off. Uh, so, uh, and then images and simple vocabulary to help them put their ideas into words is something that I could do more of. Okay, so now I have no minutes left, so I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> we'll wrap it up. Um, what benefits to dyslexia can benefit all? So there are these pieces of advice here, which also come from <laughs> <laughs> from those from those Pearson videos, uh, you go through those and you kind of go, yeah, all of those things are things we could do, and that everybody would benefit from. So, uh, I think we should try and do more of that. Um, <clears throat> and rethink content, delivery, and direction of the uh, of the classes. Thank you very much.